Nuclear weapons are a terrifying force of mankind, but thanks to recently released footage, we now get a new insight into the terrifying power and strange beauty they hold. From the desert to the ocean, here are five recently declassified nuclear test videos. Nuclear weapons are as awe-inspiring as they are scary. If the human race wanted to eradicate life as we know it, it would only take a tiny percentage of the nukes we have on hand. It is a tremendous power we hardly understood at the time, and if you ask the right conspiracy theorist, they're the reason aliens are suddenly interested in our little planet. Between 1945 and 1992, the US conducted 1,032 nuclear tests. 35 of those tests came from Operation Hardtack, conducted in 1958 between April 28th and August 18th. The blasts went off in the Pacific Ocean, in an area aptly named the Pacific Proving Grounds. One of those blasts, codenamed Juniper, made its way out of classified archives and into the public sphere. Now, most of these nuclear blast videos have two things in common. They don't come with any sound, and they all start with a bright white light. If you ever manage to talk with someone who has witnessed a nuclear blast, they usually mention that same light, followed by a powerful shockwave. Juniper went off on July 22nd of 1958. One second, it's sitting on a barge in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The next, it's a 40,000-foot mushroom cloud looming overhead. The blast was equal to 65 kilotons of TNT. To put that into perspective, one kiloton of TNT equals the explosive force of 1,000 tons of TNT. So, 65 kilotons equals 65,000 tons of TNT going off at once, which is a lot but not nearly the biggest ever recorded. That one is up next. When most people think of nuclear weapons, the first question they ask is why? Why does anything need to have that level of devastating potential? If you ask the average US citizen during the Cold War, they'd point at Russia. And if you ask the average USSR citizen, they'd point at the US. After all, the US is still the only country to use an atomic weapon on another nation. Hopefully, the last, too. Still, the Cold War ramped up nuclear programs between the two superpowers. While the US did more building and testing, the USSR set the record for biggest boom. The Tsar Bomba, also known as Ivan or Vanya, is the biggest weapon ever detonated in human history. Clocking in at 50 megatons, it was 3,300 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima in 1945. Recently declassified footage shows the test in never-before-seen clarity. Бомба приближается к точке взрыва. Высота 4000 метров. Осталось 3 секунды. 2, 1, 0. Взрыв сопровождался световой вспышкой необычной силы. В этот момент самолет-носитель находился в 45 километрах от места сброса. Вспышка и последующее свечение, несмотря на сплошную облачность, были видны в радиусе до 1000 километров. Плевой столб, поднимающийся с земли, быстро увеличился в объеме. Через несколько секунд после взрыва диаметр полевого столба составлял около 10 километров. According to our Russian narrator, the pilot was already 45 kilometers away from the blast, and still, his cockpit filled with bright light. A bone-chilling orange hue paints across the countryside, and we finally hear the sound of the blast. A cloud stretches high into the air, and at first, you don't think it's that bad. 
Then, you notice the blast radius closer to the ground. According to our Russian friend, the diameter of the dust column alone is 10 kilometers wide. So how powerful was the biggest explosion of all time? The Tsar Bomba put out 50 megatons of explosive power, making the 65 kiloton Juniper Bomb look like a sparking power outlet. One megaton equals 1,000 kilotons of TNT. So, the Tsar Bomba blew up with the force of 50,000 kilotons or 50 million tons of TNT. The flare, or the bright white light we keep seeing, was visible from Norway, Alaska, and Greenland. The scary part is, the Tsar Bomba was supposed to be twice as big. However, instead of detonating at 100 megatons, they opted for 50. The reason being, the pilot wouldn't have been able to escape. Now, when you think of Nevada, a few things must come to mind. Las Vegas, Area 51, and all those nuclear explosions out in the desert. But the US wasn't just blowing things up for the sake of blowing things up. The government ran many testing operations to learn everything about nuclear weapons. How big can we make them? How much damage will they do? Can we use them in tandem with troops on the ground? Enter Operation Teapot. Teapot consisted of 14 nuclear tests at the Nevada Test Site, also known as the Nevada Proving Grounds. The Proving Grounds cover 1,360 square miles of mountains and desert, perfect for testing nuclear weapons without hurting a fly. Nuclear blasts on their own look scary enough. Then, you see videos of the damage they can really inflict, and they become pure nightmare fuel. Perhaps you've seen footage of fake houses being obliterated by nuclear blasts. Operation Teapot, particularly an experiment codenamed Apple II, did just that. During Apple II, researchers constructed several buildings, including residential houses and electrical substations. Some called the site Survival Town. Others called it Doom Town. Call of Duty fans simply call it Nuke Town. Not all of the Doomtown buildings got blown away in the experiments. In fact, you can visit those that still stand while on the Nevada National Security Site tour. Between 1945 and 1963, world superpowers casually dropped nukes in the most remote areas of their countries to see who could build the biggest, baddest atomic bomb. They tried all kinds of methods to measure the explosive force of their weapons. They dropped them out of planes, sent them out on ships, and buried them deep underground. Nobody seemed to care about the unknown consequences of nuclear fallout. Then, in 1963, two years after Russia set the biggest boom record with the Tsar Bomba, the major nuclear powers signed the Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, which restricted atomic testing to underground explosions. Still, Operation Nougat, detonating an underground thermonuclear weapon called Danny Boy, yielded impressive results. The operation ran from 1961 to 1962, and this recently declassified video shows the size of the blast on an unassuming desert landscape. Our aerial cameraman got a clear shot of Danny Boy erupting out of the ground, sending cascades of rock and debris flying in every direction. However, Danny Boy was a drop in the bucket compared to other tests during Operation Nougat. Danny was only a 430-ton explosion, whereas China, Mink, and Platypus got up to 20 kilotons. So what happens when you detonate a nuke underground? First, nuclear energy releases in one microsecond, which is one millionth of a second. The blast immediately vaporizes any test equipment in nearby rocks, reaching a temperature of a few million degrees. In mere milliseconds, the blast melts away the next layer of rock, forming what's called a melt cavity. Finally, the blast reaches the surface, resulting in the massive mushroom cloud we all know and love. We can all be thankful that global governments limited nuclear testing to underground tests only. However, researchers got some astounding footage of nukes exploding high in the atmosphere before the treaty was signed. There are two types of high-altitude tests. 
high altitude when the nuke explodes in the clouds, and very high altitude when the nuke detonates in space. We'll call them cloud tests and space tests. Operation Dominic was a series of 31 cloud and space tests occurring shortly after the Bay of Pigs in 1961. Cold War tensions were at an all-time high, so both Soviet and American forces ramped up their testing. The Soviets dropped the Tsar Bomba, and the US responded by testing the most impressive weapons they had ever built, with the Housatonic being the biggest at the time. If the moon suddenly barreled down upon the Earth, that is what it'd look like. The Housatonic goes from a speck in the sky to a full-sized planet in the blink of an eye. It detonated with almost 10 megatons of force, which is still only a fifth of the size of the Tsar Bomba. The blast takes on a more traditional mushroom cloud appearance as it dissipates into the atmosphere. Of course, blowing nukes high in the air comes with significant drawbacks. For starters, it's impossible to contain the radiation. For example, Starfish Prime, another space test, released a radiation belt into the atmosphere that took down three US satellites. Thankfully, nobody conducts these types of tests anymore. In fact, nobody conducts nuclear tests in general anymore. The Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban was signed in 1996, but a few outlying nations have yet to ratify it, including the United States. However, the US hasn't tested a bomb since 1992. India and Pakistan refused to sign, but haven't tested weapons since 1998. Well, that about wraps things up for this video. If you enjoyed it and want to see more just like it, then be sure to click the link on screen now. With that, thanks for watching and be sure to tune in next time.